Right, welcome to the final part of uh, the Orc Meganob series, guys. So this is going to be part three, where we're going to get them painted. So I'm going to paint these guys up. I'm not going to show the full one of me painting. So just, we'll just do it. Paint them, move on, show I do it. So first step I'm going to do, so these are going to be painted in my new Walk Clan colours. So if you didn't watch that video, I'll put a link to that video somewhere on the screen, maybe top right, and you can click that and uh, take a look. So the first colour we're going to be using is just Mephiston Red. So we're just going to use this and we're just going to, because the majority of the model is going to be armour, we might as well get the red out of the way first, and then we can paint everything else around it. So, got a bit on my palette here. Big brush, don't have to be too neat. Start working it in. Keep moving it around. Keep moving it around, I'll just use this little bit what I've got in here to show you. Don't worry about this step because the consecutive layers are just going to neaten this up as you go along. So what I'll do is I'll do this off camera, pause it and I'll come back. Catch you in a moment guys. Okay so that's the red done guys. So as you can see there's a nice red coat. So because these guys are pretty much 90% armor. I thought, why not save myself a bit of time and just paint a lot of them red? And I can pick all the other, other parts out as I go along. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to grab a kind of medium brush and we're going to pick out some areas in silver and black. We've got the button black. And we've got the lead belcher. Give that a shake. Moving out to this one. I might have to swap to my new pot in a bit. Get that. Go on the palette. Touch your water. And all you want to do is you just want to go around any whatever you want really. I'm not too sure what I'm going to pick out yet but maybe things like there you can see there's a tube so I might pick that out. Get a bit of colour on that. So you can go do as much or as little as you want with this. Um, what else could you do? On the front there, pick that out, pick as much out or as little as you want. Few pipes again here, pick those out. So go around. Pick those out. Because I'm going to be giving these guys a dry brush of silver anyway, so most of it's going to be hit silver. So mainly the other parts are going to be on the weapon, so this is going to be silver. Paint's a bit watery. That's going to be silver. So then you, as well you just want to pick out some little areas. What you want to be black. Sorry for shaking the cam. So 
the corner thing I'm going to be playing black on. God, there's loads of water in that brush. So things like on his shoulder pad here, I'm just going to go ahead and paint each square. That one can yep. Each square in black. Still trembling. Might paint the other little bits white as well. Add a bit of something different to them. We yeah, go around, might pick out the tubes and things, whatnot, and these pipes and whatnot on the back here, might paint them black. Do a bit of variety, you might add a different few of the colours in there as well. So go around, pick those out. Go as much or as little as you want. So things as well, going to be things like on the top of his armour here. So you say you just want to pick out this, and then when the wash goes over that, it's going to look quite good. And on the edge there. The bush has got like this little flick on it. Can you see that? Like there's a whole bend on it now, so it's quite good getting in behind stuff. So paint that like that. Pick it as much or little as little as you want. So I'm gonna pause the video here, gonna get that done, I'm gonna pick that all out off camera, then I'll come back and let you know what I did. Catch in a bit guys. Right, that's that done. So, what we've done, just picked out a few little bits on the armour. It's not the neatest in the world. Just quick, picked up uh, the silver bits on the claws, on the little chain, fists, a few black wires. Simple, I haven't done the guns yet because I'll do a little extra bit on them because there's a few little extra pipes and things what you can paint in different colours. So I'll do them separately. Now what we're going to do is we're going to get the oh dropping my brush. We're going to get this silver paint again. We're going to dry brush over everything. So we get quite a bit on the brush. Get on your palette. Work into the bristles. Wipe a lot of it off on some kitchen towel or cloth or whatever you've got to hand. Test a bit on. I always test a bit on my hand just to make sure there's not too much. And then we're just going to go out with a complete model with this. And that's just going to pick up the edges. Make it look a bit steely, if that's a word. You can see how quick this is. Quite up to daisy. Shaky cam. Oh my god. It's going crazy here. This brush is too big. And go around all that. And you can go as light, as heavy as you want to read it to yourself. And obviously we're gonna come in later and pick out all the skin and other parts. But it's best to get these bits out of the way first. Just because they're the messiest. Yeah, so I'm going to finish off the rest of these guys now. Add a bit more silver to them. There we go. So I'm going to finish these off, get all these weapons done, and then we'll come back. Catch you a bit, guys. Right, so now the uh, silver dry bush is on. So that's how that looks. 
Looks pretty cool. And so, quick tabletop standard, that's all we're aiming for. So, now what we're going to do, so these are some of the weapons. Got that uh, steel look about it. So, we're going to be taking some extra colours now, extra metallic colours, to spice up the guns. So, we'll be using Retributor Armour or any gold, any gold that you've got. A bronzy colour, whereas I'm using both as our gold, but it looks a bit bronzy. Lead belcher as always for the silver. Tin bits, so like a, a dark metallic, using that as well. And then for any wires and piping or extra tubing, just to, to add a bit of colour to them, we'll be doing a light purple and a blue. I'm using Araman blue and Gene Steeler purple. So kind of thing we're looking for, just little bits like that in the middle there, picking out this, this front casing and this casing here. So just adding a, adding a bit of colour in the piping, put a bit of blues and purples in there. So I'll uh, get that done and I'll come back. Okay, so we've added the colours to the guns. So I've just gone around, picked a few little bits out with the bronze and the tin bits and a few pipes, purple, blue. On this one, so nothing crazy. On the claw, we gave him a dry bush as well with the silver. Picked out the pipes, and then I dry bushed the uh, mouth guards as well. So everything now is at the stage where it's been painted red. We've got the dry brush on. Uh, I've picked out a few little bits on these guys as well, just to. Define a couple of parts. So um, just uh, pick the tops out there, and then little skulls and things on his minions on the front. So that's a bit of variation to break up the uh, red. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and we're going to paint all the cloth areas on the model. For any material, we're going to paint with. So I'm using Stegodon st Scale Green. So you can use any any greyish, greenish blue, or any colour you want really. You don't have to use that. But that's what I'll be using. I'm going to paint all the material on the model. Patching a bit. Okay, so once we've got that done, I'm just going to close that door there. So once we've got that done, trousers and material all sorted. Just got to paint that chain there but I'll do that in a bit so I'm just going to paint that back with a bit of Rackarth flesh. I'm going to touch a bit of highlighting on the um, material there and what did I do that with? I find the colour might be slash, slash grey or something or, a, or a white but I want to put a little bit of highlight just on that banner there um, just to make that uh, stand out a little bit more. And that one, what I'm going to do, is going to give everything that we've painted here. The only other two parts I've got to do is these two, but I'll do those separately. I'm just going to give everything here a wash with, where is it? A black wash. Whatever black wash you have to hand. I'm just using Army Painter Dark Tone. My normal oil is absolutely drained. Probably not going to be enough, maybe. Probably will be, but I'll use that for the stuff as well. But I'm going to keep to the dark town for this. So I'm just going to wash everything now with the black wash. And then I'll come back to you. Catch you in a bit, guys. Ooh, -da. It's time to paint some skin. So we'll crack open the iron rack skin and we'll get a little bit of there on the palette. A couple of dollops there on the uh, very overused palette, as you can see. Then we'll just get a bit of water and we'll water that down. And we'll start with our first coat. Now we have put got this in speed too, um, so I don't paint this fast. So just take your time, 
get it on there. So you gotta take your time with this to not get it onto the armor because the time we spend getting the dry brushing right on the armor, we don't want to ruin that. And it will take two coats to get this to a solid base. Then we crack open our final skin color, which is the Ogun Camo. And this will just go on in one coat straight over the iron rack skin. Don't have to worry about that too much. Just a little bit on the palette, water it down and just take it over. Careful again, obviously, not to get on the armor panels, but it will go straight on a nice smooth coat first time. Well, yeah, that's what he says, but if it takes you two, it takes you two. Just put as many layers on until you see a nice opaque color. So I use a 3-0 brush here, nice fine detail brush. My brushes are fraying a little bit, but I have purchased some new ones. Um, just take your time, take really take it slow. Um, this step was quite therapeutic for me. It's quite nice putting the skin colours on after painting all the armour for how many different weapons they had. Right, final step of the skin. So, we're going to crack open a nice wash of Athonian camo shade. And we're going to take that over all the skin parts that we've just painted. So, we'll get that open there. Try not to knock it over. We don't want no spillages. Now, what I tend to do is I dip my brush in that little, don't know what it's called, but that little bit where the paint pulls up. Put it in, wipe it off a little bit, as you'll see me do. And it just makes it so there's not too much wash on the brush and I can keep control and push it into where I want to have the wash settle. So if you do have too much wash on, just dry your brush off, dab it in the part where you've got too much wash, and it will just soak it right up, and just take the wash out from where you don't want it. Okay, example here, this is what you'll see me do just here, soak up that bit of wash, there you go, it's gone. Okay, here we have him, all the skin done. Nice little close up there, looking all beautiful. Right, so now what we're going to do, we'll grab our rack off flesh or any bone colour what you've got, and we're going to paint all teeth, horns, and little bones that are sticking out on the model. There's a couple on his um, waist belt around by the cloth area, and there's one model with a couple of horns sticking out the side of his head. Also guys, let me know what you think in the comments as well about these videos. So I'm trying different things, recording and then doing the voiceovers just to make it a little bit more enjoyable for you. Just let me know if, if it's working, if you do enjoy the videos. Okay, not many stages left now. Not too much longer till these guys are complete. Now we're going to grab a brown wash, so I'm using Agrax Earthshade. Just as we did before with the washes, dip it in, dab a bit off, just so we haven't even got too much. I'm just going to make these teeth look nice and stained. Work the washing as well, so you can get more wash towards the bottom of the tooth, where the gum is, just so it leaves a nice gradient up towards, so it kind of works as a highlight and a shade at the same time for you. Okay, so that's all their skin and teeth done. Now we're going to stick on their jaw pieces, which is the face panels. Just get some glue and uh, stick them on there. They're quite good because they just they fit on either one, so you can't go wrong with them. Okay, so here's a quick close-up of them now, all nearly finished. Just a couple more bits to do, and they'll be done. So now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be painting the little power parts on the model. So where all the little coils are just on the top of the coils, we're going to be painting those. We're going to be doing something different, so just three stages of colours to just uh, build them up. And here's just another little close-up of each of them. 
and do a little rotate there. A little old fashioned show now. They're looking uh, quite good. For tabletop standard, a few dry brushes and washes. It, it, does, it does the job for me. Then we're going to take the two main weapons for the uh, leader and we're going to take three colours. Now it's just going to be a dark blue which I use Calador Sky, it's going to be a lighter blue where I use Lotharan blue and then I'm just going to take just a white where I use white scar but you can use anything that you have to hand. I'm going to start by getting a, just a nice base coat of the Calador Sky or your dark blue just down on each of the parts. A couple of thin coats if you have to, but I didn't really need them because this base colour is a, a really good base colour and it just goes over. Thin down, one easy coat because you're not really going to see too much of this anyway. Once that's dry, I'm just going to take an old little brush, it's just a thin ended brush, it's one of my older ones already, it's gone a bit battered. Take the Lotharan blue, I'm going to get a little bit of that on your palette and then we're going to just uh, use it as more like an over brush, dry brush. So wipe a lot of the paint off um, onto your paper and then just go back and forth and just build up that colour as much as you want or as little as you want. As you can see there it's quite, it's gone on quite bright but that will dry a bit darker. So you can build up layers more if you wish to. Just get it to a level where you're happy with it. And there we have it with the uh, lighter mid-tone blue done. So say you can use any blue you've got to hand, but it gives a nice gradient slowly. And then we, when we put the next uh, layer on, it will start uh, being even uh, better. So now we're going to use the white scar, and we're just going to do the same thing again, but just a, a lighter dry brush this time, a lot more just focusing on the highest points of it, and a lot less paint on your brush, and just focus on the top ends of each each area. As you can see there, just a little bit goes a long way. It just just gives that little bit extra, just three colours. It gives a nice gradient, such on a small part, you're not going to see it too much. The gradient is quite subtle on such a small area, which helps make it pop at a, long, at a more longer distance. Okay, now the final part to bring this all together I'm just going to use a glaze. Now you can make your own glaze if you just use a, a really, really watered down blue. But I'm just going to take a, a nice thin detailed brush. I'm just going to use it the way I use my washes, dip it in, wipe a lot of the paint off, not too much. I'm just going to just take that glaze, wipe it over each part, and it just brings all that dry brush and blends it all together and makes it look nice. The glaze also adds a little element of shading just around the, the base to give it an, an, just that little extra layer of the blend. So there we have it, all done. There's a nice little close up now, just looking uh, looking lovely. 
not the greatest, but it's nice and subtle, and I think it looks good. Now what I'll do off camera now is I've just got to put the black wash, just take my time and get that black wash over these two parts now and not hit where I've just done all this blending. Okay, so here we have the final finished product. One, two, three. And then weapons, all done. Tons of options, and then the magnetized parts, which is this, get things shot, and this. So, this guy, you have this option, or I'm never too sure which way this one goes around, but I think it's that way, or we can have that option, and then obviously, you can choose any options you want. In terms of hands, a bit of a tight squeeze, but there you on, you can have, I don't know. Twin power fist, this guy can have. What does it just like? Draw them out a little bit. Combi shooter with, I don't know. Let's say chain fist. Turn the trigger on. Bit of wiggle room. Chain fist, and we'll have this guy, I don't know, with his claw. Don't know quite what this is yet, but. And we'll have him with this flamer. I'm not going to show every option. Because I feel like that's a bit overkill. But. There they are. Because now obviously. I oh know, I've got to paint the bases. But. For a quick paint job. I think they've turned out quite nice. Nice little tabletop standard. And obviously there's all these weapon options. Available. I normally end up never using all the options anyway, I normally end up just leaving the same weapons on them because I'm lazy. But they're there if I, if I want them. I do like the man I do like the magnetons bit on him. I know it's only small but it makes a lot of difference. Just to be able to just swap those two weapons out. Now I did have to on these there was bits down the sides where they gripped Round it if he was actually going to glue them on. So on this, I had to shave. As you can see, obviously this bit bottom of it is not painted, but you can see there. There's, there was a, originally two bits that stuck out, and they got clamped around it as they glued on. So I had to shave them off just so it was flush with the actual model. But yeah, I'm just going to finish these off. Put the black paint around the rims. Just. Got the snow on their bases, bit of white glue, snow flock, whatever you've got. I'll use the Woodland Scenics one and just a little bit of white paint just to stop it yellowing from over time. It's probably not going to yellow over time, but you never know. And then just stipple that on. It's like a paste, and then you just stipple it on. But yeah, these guys are done. Ready to join the Orc Army. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, hope you like this video. I loved painting these, and I know it's been a long time since I've put out a video, 
but I hope you enjoyed this one. Leave me a comment if you did. Leave a like, it's always appreciated. And I'll catch you again next time. Bye for now.